units and similar figures with proportions. So we're going to go through this classwork. First thing we're going to do is simplify these ratios and make sure they're in the right um, units. So 10 centimeters over 2 centimeters just ends up giving us 5 centimeters. You could put 5 centimeters over 1 centimeter if you wanted, but it just ends up being 5 centimeters. Okay. Now, we move on to something a little harder. We've got 8 inches and 2 feet, so we have to make them the same unit. So I'm going to keep my inches the same, so instead of 2 feet, how many inches would I have? 24 inches. Now I can reduce it. 8 goes into 24 evenly, so I'm going to have 1 inch over 3 inches is what it reduces to. Okay, we get the point here? Yeah. Um, let's look at E, where we've got feet and yards. Okay, so if we have 18 feet, how do we change 2 yards into feet? It becomes how much? How many feet are in a yard? 3, good. So if we have 2 yards, we have 6 feet, right? So this becomes 3 feet over 1. I'm not. I'm saying that 2 times 3. So 2 yards, so I have 2 yards, but there's 3 feet in each. So I do 2 times 3 gives me 6. And then I'm going 18 divided by 6, which gives me 3. Well, it depends. Let's look at F. Which one am I going to change, the top one or the bottom one for F? Feet or inches? I could do it either way. So if you want to change feet, I think of it's easier for me to change the bigger um, unit into the smaller unit. So if I've got two feet, I'm going to change that into inches. I know there's 12 inches in a foot, so this becomes 24 inches over 24 inches, which is just one, or one over one, either way. Okay. How many centimeters are in a meter, guys? A hundred. Okay, so if I have four centimeters on top, how many centimeters do I have in the bottom? I have 300, right? Okay. So 4 goes into 300, how many times can I reduce this? I get 1 over 75. Those are percentages. Okay. Questions about making sure they're the same units before you reduce them? Any questions about that? Okay, we're going to move on to the next section if there's no questions. Okay. The perimeter of a rectangle is 60 centimeters. Perimeter means you add up all the outsides, right? You guys remember that? The ratio of the width to length is 3 to 2. Find the length and the width of a rectangle. Okay. So we know if, we, if it's a rectangle, these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same. So I can go 2 times the width plus 2 times the length equals 60, correct? Yep. Okay. The ratio of the width to the length is 3 to 2. So my length is 3 to 2 of my width. So if I have width plus width plus length plus length equals 60, I can do either one of these. I'm going to change it so that I'm going to have my width so we go 2x plus 2x <coughs> plus 3x plus 3x equals 60. Or you could put it in here. You could go, you know. Then we can combine like terms. 2 plus 2 is 4. 
plus 6 more, we get 10x equals 60. Divide by 10. So this is my width. My width is 6. Okay? So we have to, uh, excuse me, my x is 6. So we've got to go 2 times 6 equals 12. So that's my width. And then 3 times 6 equals 18, so that's my length. So I know my ratio is 3 to 2. So once I find out what x is, I'm going to times it by 2 to get my width, and then I'm going to times it by 3 to get my length. Uh, why? Okay, so do you guys see the ratio? It says 3 to 2. Okay, so I know that if I have x and I times it by 3, that gives me my length. And if I have x, if I times it by 2, that gives me my width. Yeah, so that's why I'm putting a 2 in front of each of these for my width. And I'm putting a 3 in each of these for my length. Width is going to be the smaller one, so whichever one is smaller is going to be my width. So that's why the two I knew had to be my width. Okay. The measures of an angle and a triangle are extended ratio 1, 2, and 3. Find the measures of the angle. What do the interior angles of a triangle add up to be? What do the interior angles of a triangle add up to be? 180. 180. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is say is put an x by each of these and add them up to 180. So I'm going to say 1x plus 2x plus 3x equals 180. Because I know one angle, if I times it by 2, gives me the second angle. And if I take that first angle and times it by 3, I get the third angle. That's what that ratio is telling me. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 gives me 6x equals 180. I take 180 and divide it by 6, and I get x equals 30. So that's angle 1. What is my next angle? How do I find angle 2 now and angle 3? So my second angle is twice as big as my first, so my second angle would be 60, and my third angle would be 90. It's a little weird but it should work for you. Mm -hmm. Questions about that before I move on? Okay, let's solve these proportions. These should be a lot like your homework was. I just want to make sure we've got this. Okay. So A, what do I do first for A? 9 times 7 is? 63. 2 times x is 2x. Divide both sides by 2. And I get 31 and 1 half equals x. If you put 31.5, is that the same thing? Okay. B. 5 times 6 is? 3 times 5x is? How do I get x by itself? Divide by 15. Okay, why don't you guys try C on your own?
If you feel comfortable with C, go ahead and try D. Okay, you ready? Four times x is just four x. Three times x is three x. Three times four is 12. Now I'm gonna subtract three x from both sides. And that just gives me x equals negative 12. All right, let's look at D. 12 times 3 is 36. X times X is X squared. How do I get rid of an X squared, guys? Square root. Good. So X equals what? 6. Remember, X could also equal what? Negative 6. Right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. The square root of 36, excuse me. The square root of 36 could be 6 or negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. we got to stop talking when talking like this. Okay. Other questions? Because it's not 2x, because x times x is x squared. x plus x is 2x. Okay, number 4, using proportions. All right. PQ and QR is 3 to 5. So I'm going to go 3 to 5. PQ is J over QR, stop talking, is 24. So be careful how I set that up. I'm saying PQ over QR is 3 to 4. So 3 and PQ both have to go on top. PQ is J. So I'm setting up my own proportion before solving it. 5 times j is 5j, 3 times 24 is 72, divide that by 5, and I get 5. j equals what? 5 goes into 7, one time with 2 left over, right? 5 goes into 22 four times with 2 left over, so 14 and 2 fifths. Yeah, so you just go 72 divided by 5. You get 14.4, same thing. Either one. Okay. B. We've got EF over FG equals 4 fifths. So EF is Y plus 7. I'm putting that over FG, which is 40. Then we've got 4 on top and 5 on the bottom. Are we okay with setting that up? I'm going to have you try C on your own. So we go 4 times 40 is 160. 5 times y is 5y, 5, 5 times 7 is 35. Now I subtract 35 from both sides. And 
and I get 125 equals 5y. I divide that by 5, and I get y equals 25. Okay, go ahead and try C on your own. We ready? Wx is x plus 2 over xv, which is 2x. 5 goes on top. 7 goes on the bottom. I'm not sure why we're talking one top. Now I'm going to cross multiply. 2x times 5 is 10x. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times 2 is 14. We're going to subtract 7x from both sides. We get 3x equals 14. We divide both sides by 3. And we get x equals 4 and 2 thirds, or that's 4.6 repeating, either way. So if you look right here, it's telling me Wx has to match up with 5. Okay. All right, let's look at the homework. Make sure you have no questions before we move on to math. Okay. The homework is all on similar figures. So you're finding the missing side. So we have to make sure they are set up correctly so the similar side matches the similar side. We get that 12 and 3 match each other, right? And 20 and x match each other. So we're going to go 12 over 3 equals 20 over x. I could have put 3 over tw uh, 12 equals x over 20, which would have been fine, but I recommend doing it um, left to right so you don't get mixed up. Right, 12 equals 3, 20 equals x. No, because 3 and 12 equal each other. So they're across. And 20 and x equal each other, so they're across from each other. Now I'm going to cross multiply and I get 12x equals 60. Divide both sides by 12, x equals 5. Okay? <laughs> Just remember some of them are turns, like number 7 is turned funny. Make sure you match the ones that go together. And there are the ones in the back as well. If there's more than one side, you don't have to do it. Like I can do 84 and 12 and x and 11 here. I don't have to do three different equations just because they're there. Just have to pick the correct ones. Okay. All right, you have the rest of the hour to work on your homework.